Hello, <laughs> it's me again. Pre-trib moment number three. Why don't we talk today, right now, about the fruit of pre-trib rapture belief. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. The Bible says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now look at verse 20. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Let me ask you a question. If the pre-trib rapture system was created in 1830 by John Nelson Darby, like many of the enemies of the pre-trib rapture system, they teach this, that it was created in 1830 and there's no mention before 1830, then let's just go by what the Bible says here as the standard for a false prophet, determining if somebody is a false prophet. What are the fruits of the pre-trib rapture system? Well, let's see. What happened since 1830? 1830 to, to, we'll say 1950 or so, when the King James Bible ruled supreme in the churches. What were the fruits of pre-trib rapture belief? Um, the greatest missionary movement in, in church history, the greatest soul winning, the greatest preaching, the greatest writing, the greatest evangelist, the greatest period in church history really came into play after 1830. And what was the cause of that? It was the cause of people believing that Jesus Christ could come back at any time. See, that's the fruit of the pre-trib rapture system. The fruit of believing in the imminent return of Jesus Christ is you don't worry about the things of the world. You concern yourself with the things of pleasing Jesus Christ. Why do you think I'm out here today in the snow, out here in the forest, recording this video? You know why? Because I believe Jesus Christ could come back very soon. That's why I'm out here recording this video to warn you, the viewer, if you're saved, get busy for the Lord. If you're lost, you better get saved quick. That's why I'm out here. You see, the fruit that comes from believing in the pre-tribulation rapture of the body of Christ, it's good fruit. Okay? You say, well, the modern churches, they're worldly. Yeah, that's because they're not looking for the imminent return of Jesus Christ. That's because they've taken their eyes off of looking for Jesus and put their eyes on the world. They're more interested in money and in materialism. That's what makes them worldly. Don't give me this thing that pre-tribulation rapture belief makes you worldly, makes you carnal. It does not. We're looking for Jesus Christ. You people out there that believe in a post-trib rapture or pre-wrath rapture, you're the ones that are worldly. You're the ones that are stockpiling the food and getting ready to survive and all this other stuff and endure to the end to be saved. You're the ones that are worldly. Okay? Not us. Let me just give you a little bit of comparison here. If you believe in a pre-trib rapture, Jesus could come at any time. So, number one, win as many souls as possible. Clean up your life, number two. Number three, when the last soul is saved, we are leaving. So what's the motivation for the rapture? Win as many souls as possible. When the body of Christ is complete, we leave. And the Bible prophesies that the world is going to get worse, so spend your time witnessing, and don't waste your time trying to reform the political process. That's the fruits of pre-trib rapture belief. What about post-trib rapture, or pre-wrath, if you think that you're going to go through some part of it or all of it? Well, the Antichrist is coming first, so then you can gauge how much time you have before Jesus returns. So soul winning has to take a back seat because you're too busy preparing to survive for seven years. And you're busy with political activism to try and hold off the forces of the New World Order. Compromise your standards so you can affect more political change. You say, oh, that's crazy. We don't do that. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. Everybody who's post-trib will join with secular media and will join with other people in the patriot movement. You know, look at the Alex Jones show. Perfect example. 
New Agers, lost people, sodomites, all kinds of wicked people coming in there, as long as they're patriotic, as long as they stand for the Constitution, well, we'll join hands with them to fight the greater evil of the New World Order. You see? That's the fruit of post-trib belief. The fruit of post-trib belief is, I've heard like guys like Chuck Baldwin, he'll say, well, I have friends that are, that are post-millennial and some that are amillennial, you know, and it's really not a big deal. It's a huge deal. The Bible, the King James Bible, teaches the premillennial coming of Jesus Christ. The kingdom is promised to Jesus Christ. So you take the kingdom away, you say the kingdom is just spiritual or allegorical. You're taking the kingdom away. If you say it's post-millennial, then it's man that brings in the thousand years of peace. You know, yeah, right. And again, you're taking the kingdom away from Jesus Christ. But you see, a guy like Chuck Baldwin compromises with the lost world so he can get more popularity, so he can fight and be involved in the political process. That's what it's about. That's what it's definitely about. The fruit of post-trib rapturism is corrupt. It's evil. And if you're post-trib rapture, belief, or pre-wrath, you have to hold on to a hope that you might be able to defeat the New World Order, or at least parts of it, and maybe even restore America and the Constitution. Right? Isn't that what you believe? So I, I, don't, I don't believe that way. Yeah, you do. I've been around post-trib rapturism. I know what they believe. I know what they teach. Okay? And as I stated, the modern church is not, you know, they say it, you were, the modern church is wimpy because of the pre-trib rapture system. That isn't it at all. The modern church is wimpy because of worldliness. Because of compromising, unscriptural compromise. That's what makes the modern church wimpy. That's what makes them Laodicean. Because they've compromised. Read Revelation chapter 3 there about the Laodicean church age. They're rich. They're increased with goods. They have need of nothing. That's what makes them worldly. Not believing in an imminent return of Jesus Christ. Don't fall for that. And by the way, let me just say one other thing. And I'm going to be talking about this in another pre-trib rapture moment. But another reason that the post-tribbers uh, like to go against the pre-trib rapture position is because pre-trib rapture teaches that one of the things that happens when we get raptured up, the first thing that will happen is the judgment seat of Christ. And so you go pre-wrath or, pre or post-trib, well, there might not be time for that judgment seat of Christ. You know. So, you know, maybe we won't be judged. Maybe, you know, we'll just endure to the end to be saved and then the kingdom comes in and we'll just go right into it. And, you know, and there's nothing about judgment. Uh-huh. But I'm going to cover that more in detail in a future pre-trib moment. But you see, the fruit of pre-trib rapture belief is good fruit. If the rapture was first founded in 1830, which is a lie, it was being taught in the 2nd and 3rd century, and it's taught in the Bible, really. I mean, since when do we as Christians go and look at church tradition to determine truth? That's not of the Lord. But it was being taught early on. It's been taught by Christians down through the centuries. Okay, But if it has come into play after 1830, then you can show that the fruits of pre-trib rapture belief, of an intense drive to win souls because Jesus could come back at any time, an intense drive to fight against sin because we have to purify our lives because of the imminent return of Jesus Christ, those are good fruits. Those aren't corrupt fruits. Those aren't evil fruits. Pre-trib rapture belief brings good fruits. Post-trib pre-wrath brings evil fruits. Okay? That's the way it is. Sorry.